Today we are going to talk about matrix operations, and there are four things that we are going to talk about, four operations that can be done on matrices. The first two are pretty straightforward. We start with scalar multiplication, and those of you that are familiar with vectors will immediately recognize that this is the same type of scalar multiplication that we talk about with vectors. If I consider an example where I want to take 2, the scalar, and multiply it by the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, then this works out exactly the way that you would think. If you had to make a guess, you would guess that we would just multiply each entry of the matrix by the, this scalar. So I would end up with a same 2 by 2 matrix where I would have 2, 4, 6, and 8 as those entries. Again, scalar multiplication, pretty straightforward. The second uh, type of matrix operation is also pretty straightforward, and that is if we were to add or subtract two matrices. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to add these two matrices. And again, if I asked you to guess what to do, you would guess correctly. If we want to add two matrices together, then the two matrices have to be the same size, and we just add them entry by entry. So two plus, uh, 1 plus 2 uh, would give me 3. 2 minus 1 would give me 1. 3 plus 3 would give me 6. And 4 plus 4 would give me 8. And so I would end up with that 2 by 2 matrix. So scalar multiplication and addition and subtraction of matrices. Again, if you were to guess how to do those, I think that you would guess correctly. The third operation is a little bit more complicated, and that is matrix multiplication. Now, if I asked you to multiply these two matrices together, uh, if you've never seen mul matrix multiplication before, your first guess would probably be to multiply entry by entry. And that would be a pretty good guess, but it's not how we multiply matrices together. What we do is what's very similar to a dot product, for those of you that have seen dot products before. Uh, if I'm going to multiply these two matrices together, then what will be the case is that I will get a 2 by 2 matrix. And the way that I find the first entry, that's the first row, first column, is that I will multiply the first row of the first matrix by the first column of the second matrix. And I do this entry by entry. So I'd multiply the first entry of the row by the first entry of the column. So that would be 1 multiplied by 2. And then I add to that the second entry of the row multiplied by the second entry of the column, which would be plus 2 times 3. Now, 1, plus, 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 is going to be 2 plus 6, which is 8. So the first row, first entry is going to end up being an 8. Now, if I move over to the first row, second column, very similarly, I'm going to take the first row of the first matrix and multiply it by the second column of the second matrix. So knowing what, what the index of the entry is going to help you decide what you need to multiply. So this was the first row, second column, so I am multiplying the first row by the second column. So 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, and then 2 times 4 is 8, and so that will give me 7. Uh, coming down here, this is going to be the second row, first column, so I want to multiply the second row by the first column. So that would be 3 multiplied by 2, which is 6, plus 4 multiplied by 3, which is 12. So 6 plus 12 is 18. And then in the second row, second column, I want to multiply the second row by the second column. So 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 4, that would be negative 3 plus 16, which would give me 13. So multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix and a 2 by 2 matrix will give us a 2 by 2 matrix. And then essentially what has happened is I'm filling up the product with a bunch of dot products. Before we look at the next example, I'd like to just point out that we are multiplying these two matrices. And if I took this matrix and called it A, and I took this matrix and called it B, um, I'm going to use those in the next example. All right. so. Let's look at the next example, and you will notice that what I have now is the matrix B 
and the matrix A. So in the previous example, I looked at the product A times B, and in this example, I'm looking at the product B times A. Very similarly, we have two two by two matrices, and those are going to multiply together to be a two by two matrix. The first row, first column, we'll, we will find by taking the first row of B and multiplying it by the first column of A. So two times one plus negative one times three, and that will give us a negative one. The first row, second column, I will get by multiplying the first row of B by the second column of A. So that will be two times two. Uh, plus negative one times four, which will give me zero. The second row first column, I will get by multiplying the second row by the first column. So three times one plus four times three will give me 15. And then lastly, the second row multiplied by the second column will be three times two, which is six, plus four times four, which is uh, 16, so 16 plus six will give me 22. Now, the most important thing here to recognize is that when I multiplied B times A, I get this result. And if we go back one slide, you'll see that multiplying A times B gave us this result. So key thing to notice here is that in general, when we take A times B, we do not get B times A. Uh, that is uh, what is called the commutative property that we are very used to in math, that A times B is equal to B, to B times A. And so matrix multiplication is not commutative. All right, next example. Um, it turns out that matrices do not have to have the same size when we multiply them. So for example, here I have a matrix that is a two by two, and I would like to multiply that by a matrix that has two rows and three columns. And it turns out that we are allowed to do that. It's uh, w when we consider that m multiplying a row by a column, if I'm gonna multiply this row by this column, I have enough entries in order to be able to do that. So let's see what would we would end up with when we do this multiplication. So the row one negative two times the column negative one two will give me negative one minus four, which will be negative five. Then if I take the first row and multiply it by the second column, I'll get one times three and negative two times one. So that will give me one. And then I can multiply the first row by the third column negative one times four plus negative two times zero will give me four. So I'm gonna end up with a matrix that has three columns as a result. When I go to do the second row, I will have negative, four, uh, negative one, four times negative two, one. So that will be one plus um, eight, which gives me nine. Then multiplying the second row by the second column will give me negative three, plus four, which is one. And then multiplying the second row by the third column will give me negative four plus zero, which is negative four. So if I multiply a two by two matrix and a two by three matrix, I will end up with a two by three matrix. So let's see if we can understand a little bit about the sizes when we're dealing with matrix multiplication. Let's say in general that I have a matrix uh, doesn't have to be square. Let's just say, for example, that it was a three by uh, two matrix. That means that there are uh, three rows and there are two columns. So the matrix would look something like that. If I'm going to multiply that by, by another matrix, then I would need the number of entries in the row to match the number of entries in the column of the next matrix. So there are two columns on the left matrix, so that means that I would need there to be two rows on the right matrix. So this would have to be a two by something, and we'll figure out what that something is in just a second. So I definitely need there to be two rows in the product. And essentially what I get is that these two numbers have got to be the same. The number of columns in the first matrix has to be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. Now, let's say that this uh, matrix on the right was a two by four. So it had 
four columns of entry of of um, entries. So when I go to do the product, I would end up with I can multiply it. So I would multiply the first row by the first column, the first row by the second column, the first row by the third column, and the first row by the fourth column. So that implies that my product is going to end up having four columns. I could also multiply the second row by each one of those and the third row by each one of those. So my result is going to end up being a three by four. So the thing that we look for in matrix multiplication is that the number of columns in the first matrix has to be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. And the result will have the number of rows in the first matrix by the number of columns in the second matrix. So if it's a three by two and a two by four, we are allowed to multiply them. And when we do, we will get a three by four. If these two entries do not match the inside dimensions, then you cannot do the multiplication. It will not be defined. So for the next example, let's look at 2, 4, negative 1, 3 multiplied by 1, 0, 0, 1. My first question is, can we multiply this? Well, we've already seen that we can, but let's just double check based on what we just looked at. This is a 2 by 2 and I'm multiplying it by a two by two. So I need to check that these two inside entries are the same. They are, so I'm allowed to do this. And then the outer entries is what I'm going to end up getting. So I will get a two by two matrix. So let me start by showing you what the two by two matrix is. Then when I calculate the first row first entry, I will take the first row multiplied by the first column, which will be two times one plus four times zero, that's a two. Then for the first row second column, I'll get two times four plus zero times one, that will be four. Then I get the row negative one, three times the column one, zero, which will be negative one. Then I get negative one, three times zero, one, and that will be three. So what I notice is that if this is the matrix A, then what I got as a result is also A. This matrix is what we call the identity matrix. And it is denoted by the capital letter I. And it is a matrix that is always square and has ones going down the main diagonal and it has zeros everywhere else. The identity behaves like the number one. So seven times one is seven. Any number times one is going to be the same number. Uh, the identity matrix behaves in the same way. So if you multiply the identity matrix times any other matrix, you will always get the same matrix back. The identity is always square. Uh, so, for example, if I wanted to take the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then this is a 2 by 3 matrix. And if I wanted to multiply it by the identity, it would have to have three rows. And since it's square, it would also have to have three columns. So the identity matrix would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And when I multiply those two things together, this is a three by three. These inside dimensions match. And so I will get something that is the outside dimensions and it will turn out that I get the exact same matrix back. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more example with matrix multiplication is I wanna take these two matrices to get, uh, and multiply them together. Three, four, one, one, negative one, four, one, three. Uh, we know from before that this will be a two by two matrix. And if I take three, four and multiply it by negative one, one, I'll get negative three minus four, which is one. Then the first row times the second column will be three times four time, uh, plus four times negative three. That's 12 minus 12, which is zero. Then one times negative one plus one times one, which is zero plus one times four plus one times negative three, which is one. And we see that this result turned out to be the identity. So just like in arithmetic, 
if I take the number seven and multiply it by one, I get the number seven back. I also could take the number seven and multiply it by one over seven to get the number one. So if this is the matrix A, then we will call this the matrix A inverse because A times A inverse multiplies together to be the thing that behaves like a one. So we have talked about scalar multiplication. We've talked about addition and subtraction, pretty straightforward computations. Matrix multiplication, not too difficult, but certainly not what you would have guessed matrix multiplication would end up being. And the last computation, is what's called the transpose of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix takes the rows and turns them into the columns of a matrix. So in this example, we use the superscript T as, a, as the notation for a transpose. The transpose of a two by two matrix will again be a two by two matrix, but I'm going to take the first row and make that the first column of the transpose and take the second row and make that the second column of the transpose. I just said turn the rows into columns, but you should also recognize that I have taken the first column and turned it into the first row and similarly turned the, first, uh, the second column into the second row. Last thing to say about the transpose of a matrix is that there's nothing about this that requires it to be square. For example, if I had the matrix one, two, three, four, five, six, which is a two by three matrix, and I took the transpose, I would take the first row and turn and make that the first column of the transpose. So it would be one, two, and three. And then I would take the second row and make it to be the second column, which is four, five, and six. So the transpose of a two by three matrix ends up being a three by two matrix. So not only did it transpose the elements, but it also transposed the rows and columns of the matrix.